more exciting than breakfast and a lot more enjoyable to cook, brunch is ideal for sharing. First up, my simple and delicious frittata. Eggs are great. They are so versatile. And once you've mastered how to cook them, trust me, the door then opens to a wide range of delicious options. This is like a triple omelette, but a lot more ingredients than a normal omelette. We're going to start off with some lovely smoked bacon. Slice the bacon, bacon in. No salt, a little touch of pepper. Start off on a high heat, get that bacon really nice and crispy. Otherwise, you just boil the bacon and it's got that soft, unpleasant texture in the potato. Turn down the gas and now start adding your veg. Roughly chop a red pepper and add it to the pan. The peppers and the bacon take the longest, so they've always got to go in first. Now, soak them off. And the peppers have been cooked now from that sort of rendered fat from the bacon. And then the spring onions. Just bunch them up and slice them. I want them on an angle so they come like little green diamonds. Spring onions in. Now, for the eggs. Crack in the eggs. For that size pan, seven or eight eggs. I want to fill it right to the very top. And more importantly, when I turn this out, I want it like a gatto, nice and thick, so we can slice through and see all those wonderful veg. Mm. I'm going to season the eggs with some Parmesan cheese. Be quite generous, because it adds a really nice saltiness. Fresh ground pepper and then whisk. Whisk up those eggs nicely. Then add peas to the pan. And to give the dish a wonderful aromatic freshness, some fragrant chopped basil. I want to chop that sort of roughly because I want to see those flecks of green going in. I want it looking charming. And how many times have you seen a, a dull omelette? Frittatas, in my mind, really help encapsulate the magic of having savoury eggs cooked beautifully, but with texture. Now, just before we had the eggs, I've got this beautiful little goat's cheese, and it's strong and powerful. So I want to slice it into little chunks and then just have it dotted around. I want to discover these little pockets of creamy goat's cheese. Now, slowly add the eggs. Fill that right up. And get your spoon. Now, just let all that egg go down to the bottom. Bring it back up to the boil and sort of clean around the sides. And then some of this delicious, salty, creamy goat's cheese over the top. Now, I want it melting like a, a perfect slice of cheese on toast. Nice. Now, from there, turn the grill on for four to five minutes. Mmm. Now, just looking at that, delicious. Take a little paring knife and just make sure it's released on the sides. Just take your pan and tap. That will hopefully release the frittata from the bottom of the pan. Now, put the board over the pan. Turn that gently and just shake. Say a little prayer and lift off. Now, from there, on, there it's there, look. Now, slice through. Mm. You can see how soft and creamy that is in the center. And that goat's cheese is just melting, almost like a little sauce inside. So exciting, but more importantly, so easy to do. It's got texture, it's got creaminess, and that, for me, will beat any omelette for brunch.
Served with a stack of hot buttered toast and a steaming pot of coffee, this easy frittata turns the humble egg into the perfect dish for kicking off the weekend. Brunch should be a laid-back affair and a treat, so the dishes need to be easy to cook but never boring. My next recipe takes the humble pancake to a whole new level of flavour and excitement. Soft, fiery and irresistible. Spicy pancakes. One of the secrets to good cooking is learning to use your imagination. When it comes to brunches, you don't have to stick to the old standbys. These delicious, spicy pancakes are a really great alternative, but more importantly, so easy to do. Start off by toasting your cumin. It's a dry roast, basically. Non-stick pan, just a touch of seasoning. The salt helps to dry out the cumin even more. And then fresh ginger. Slice them nice and thinly. Stack it back up, and then just slice. Nice little thin slices in there. And then keep that bunched up. Shake the chilli. Removing the seeds will prevent things getting too hot. Now, garlic. Nice. Now, add olive oil to your toasted cumin seeds and in with the garlic, ginger and chilli. Lovely. And it feels strange when you talk about garlic for breakfast, but the time I spent in India, everybody was eating something savoury for breakfast. It was extraordinary. Into your bowl. And set aside. Next, the pancake filling. Add olive oil to a hot pan. Mustard seeds in. Now they'll start dancing the minute they hit the pan. Mm. Then finely slice an onion. Onions in. A little teaspoon of turmeric. Sprinkle that in. And look at the colour. An instant change. Leftover potatoes. Just slice them. smell is incredible. Potatoes in now. Spread the potatoes across the pan. I want the potatoes stained. I want them sort of absorbing all that really nice turmeric, acting like a sponge. Season those potatoes, and it really helps to bring out the spice beautifully. They're ready. Turn off the gas and let them sit there and absorb all those flavors. Back to the pancake batter. Add plain flour to your cooled garlic, chilli, ginger and cumin seeds. A touch of salt and pepper. Nothing worse than the bland pancake. One whole egg, milk. Hold the jug with one hand and whisk with the other. The secret is to get that really nice smooth paste, but whisking that egg first. That brings it together and then you're milking. Don't put all the milk in, because then you're going to get a lumpy pancake mix. And if you put less milk in, it really helps it not go lumpy. Look at that. Milk in. And the secret for me is to have a nice thin mix. Now, just a little teaspoon of oil. That helps to bring a nice crispy edge to the mixture. Now, just taste. Mm. That's the texture. Pan on. The larger the pan, the better. It helps to create the nice, thin, even surface. I want that mix going all the way around the pan. Before you put the mixture into the pan, make sure you give your pancake mix a really nice stir. Pan, it's nice and hot. Turn down the gas. A touch of olive oil in. Get that nice. Whisk with one hand. Pan to the mix. In, one and a half ladles, and then roll it around. So it's really nice and thin. I want to see the ginger, the garlic. That's what I'm looking for. In there. Now back onto the heat. It only starts to remove from the bottom of the pan and lifts itself up once it's cooked. These little bubbles confirm that it's just starting to lift off the pan. A little shake. That releases it and then just shake it to the end and toss. If you haven't got the confidence of tossing, 
then use a spatula and turn it over. Now, that's exactly what I want, that nice sort of crisp edge around the side. The colour on the pancake is so important. Now, roll it round and just let it slide out beautifully. Mm. Now, for the exciting part, filling them. Take your potatoes, just sort of have a really nice imaginary line. And then just very carefully roll that nice and tightly. Tuck it underneath there, pull it back and roll. Beautiful. The delicious pancakes are ready to eat, but with a simple dipping sauce, they'll be a real treat. Just mix chopped coriander with natural yogurt. That's a really nice cooling agent. Sit that on the side. And that, for me, is a, a great brunch. Delicious, spicy pancakes. Amazing. And one of my all-time favorites, a dish that always creates a stir, is the daddy of all brunches, steak sandwiches. For me, the secret of a great brunch is fun and casual. Fuss-free cooking and everyone helping themselves. This is the ultimate steak sandwich. You want the Rolls-Royce of beef. It has to be fillet. Now, season it beautifully. I like to open up the top of the pepper mill to increase the size of the pepper in the steak, so it gives that bit of heat. Nice little chunks. You just roll now nicely all the way around. Now, slice the garlic in half. Pan nice and hot. Olive oil in. Hold the steak and just place it into the pan. Don't drop it. At the front of the pan. We're going to tilt the pan forward to cook the back of the steak, dual purpose. Now, roll it back and sear it underneath. Next, my garlic. And roast that garlic. Time. Fry that time. I want to hear it. We're not looking for a lot of colour because you're going to dry out the fillet. So, just one end, turn it back down, and sear the other end in. Lift up your thyme, place it on top of the garlic. There. Lift up your fillet and sit that on top of your garlic. Butter in. Take a spoon, tilt the pan gently, lift up and baste. I've got that scented garlic thyme flavour. The steak's going to cook evenly because it's sat on a little, a little bed in the oven for eight to ten minutes. Pan on. For the relish, you think of a steak sandwich, you think of a sort of nice heated tomato relish. To make the relish, finely dice a red onion. Three finger rule. One in front, two behind. Through and chop. Wow. Next, roughly chop a chilli, keeping the seeds in for extra heat. Start off with the olive oil into a pan. Onions, chilli. Generous with the olive oil. I want a nice sort of rich, silky relish. From there, take your tomatoes. You can just use red tomatoes, but these yellow and red make the perfect combination. Now, put your salt in. Pepper. And then roast those tomatoes off. Take a wooden spoon and just sort of break them up. Once the skin's blister, the whole tomato just starts to release all that really nice, sweet texture. A little teaspoon of sherry vinegar. Gives that nice, acidic balance to the sweetness of the tomatoes. Turn down the gas and just let them sort of stew perfectly. Now, a steak sandwich would not be complete unless it had the most amazing mustard mayonnaise. Simply add three tablespoons of mayonnaise to three teaspoons of whole grain mustard. Now I've got the relish almost down to like a really nice jam. Now, 
I want to make that relish a little bit more fragrant. Some basil. Slice it through. And sprinkle that basil in there. Mmm. Beautiful. Look at this. There she is. My crown jewels. Time to take it out. The smell is incredible. I'm just baste one more time. I'll fill it. Touch is quite soft in the centre, so it's just coming up to mid rare. Let it rest at the same time you cooked it. It will be nice and pink evenly throughout the steak. To make my sandwich, I'm going to char grill some sliced gipatta bread. Season it nicely. Just a little drizzle of olive oil. I want to get that bread nice and crispy. Pan, nice and hot. Bread in. Push it down. Smell is amazing, that char, sort of charcoal flavour. Once you've got those marks on the bread, it just stops the bread from becoming soggy. And look at this here. It is stunning. On. Slice it gently. One beautiful slice. Wow. It's nice and pink all the way through. And the beef is so soft. It's almost like slicing through butter. Let the knife do the work. Take a little bit of mayonnaise, spread that at the back of the spoon on both sides. Next, lettuce. Take that beautiful slice of beef. Oh, and then relish on top of that beef and just slice the sandwich in half. Mmm. Beautiful. Now that's what I call a steak sandwich. Trust me, serve this sublime sandwich for brunch and you'll put a smile on everyone's face.